Welcome, Wonder Explorers, to Atomic Booger, the podcast where we zoom through the universe of awesome facts and blast away boring. I'm your resident brainiac, Adam. And I'm your magnificent, fire-breathing co-host, Booger. (laughs) Today, we're talking about something super cool that often makes me wish I had wheels. And less scales. Flying cars. Cars that fly like in Back to the Future or Futurama or Phineas and Ferb or Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secret. That's right, Booger. For decades, people have dreamed about hitting the skies in their very own personal flying machine. This is Atomic Booger! Imagine trading boring rush hour traffic for a relaxing ride through the clouds. Sounds much better than trying to squeeze my wings through those tiny car lanes. Exactly. So, Adam, what exactly is a flying car for all our little hatchlings listening? Great question, Booger. A flying car or roadable aircraft is a special kind of vehicle that can work as both a regular road vehicle and an aircraft. Some are even designed to drive like motorcycles on the road. Wow, so they're like transformers, cars that turn into planes? Exactly. They typically drive on the road using wheels, just like a regular car. But then, for flying, they might have fixed wings, like an airplane, or spinning rotors, like a helicopter, or even use direct engine power to lift off. Many of the new ones are called EVTOLs, which stands for Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Vehicles. What are those? That means they can go straight up and down, like a helicopter, without needing a long runway. No runways, you say? That's handy. But why do humans care so much about these flying contraptions? Can't you just use your wings? Unfortunately, humans don't have wings. Oh, yeah. I forget sometimes. Well, first, it's been a dream for a long, long time. Authors like Jules Verne imagined them in the 1800s. Even Henry Ford, who made a lot of regular cars, predicted in 1940 that a combination airplane and motor car is coming. It's about using more of the available space in the world to get people where they need to go, unlocking a third dimension of travel, up or down. It could help reduce traffic congestion. So, less traffic jams for me to get stuck in when I'm pretending to be a car. I can get behind that. Beep, beep. Plus, experts think the air mobility market, which includes flying cars, could be worth a whopping $1 trillion by 2040. Wow, that's a very fat wallet. Yep. Companies like Uber and Hyundai are even investing in developing EVTOLs to use as flying taxis. So, when did this flying car dream actually start taking off, Adam? Well, the very first roadable aircraft was built by aviation pioneer Glenn Curtis in 1917. It was called the Curtis Autoplane. It could lift off the ground, but sadly, it never truly flew. (laughs) So close. (laughs) Did anyone actually get one to fly then? (laughs) They sure did. The world's first successful flying car was invented by Waldo Waterman in 1932. His first design was called the What's It? Because reporters kept asking... What's that? He followed up with the Waterman Aerobile in the late 1930s, which was even painted Buick Blue, and used parts from regular car makers like Studebaker and Ford so it would look like a car. What's it? Bless you. Ha! That's a good one. Uh, What about more recent ones? Well, in 1949, Molt Taylor's Aerocar made a successful flight, and it's considered one of the first practical flying cars. More recently, the Terrafugia Transition, first flown in 2009, has foldable wings and is designed to be street legal. 
And in 2012, the Netherlands PAL V Liberty, which is a type of gyrocopter, became the first flying car to go into production. Gyrocopter? Is that like a helicopter? <laughs> sort of. Unlike a helicopter, the rotor, which is like the big propeller on a gyrocopter, is not powered by an engine. Instead, it spins freely. That's because of the airflow. As the gyrocopter moves forward, then moves the rotor around. Just a few years ago in January 2022, the Kleinvision air car from Slovakia was even type certified as an aircraft. All right, Adam, enough with the history lessons. Let's tickle some funny bones. It's time for Booger's Barrel of Belly Laughs. Oh no, here we go. Flying into some awful jokes. Hey! Sorry. What do you call a flying car that is really smart? I give up? A road scholar. It knows all the roads. Okay, my turn. What kind of music do flying cars listen to? Uh, anything with a good beat? They listen to heavy metal. Because they need to stay grounded when they're not flying. All right, Booger. Let's get serious for a moment, but keep it super inspiring. One thing that's really cool about flying cars is how they could help people. Oh, I love helping people, especially if it involves carrying something heavy, like a really big sandwich, <laughs> and then getting to share it as a reward. <laughs> well, this story is about a different kind of help. Back in 2008, a group called the Indigenous Peoples Technology and Education Center of Florida designed a flying vehicle called the Maverick Flying Dune Buggy. A flying dune buggy? That sounds like something I'd build. It was, and it was created for an amazing purpose. The Maverick was initially conceived to help provide ministry to remote communities in the Amazon rainforest. Imagine trying to reach villages deep in the jungle where there are no roads, just dense forests and winding rivers. Traditional cars can't get there, and even regular planes need big landing strips. So this dune buggy, it could drive on the ground, then just fly over all the tough parts? Exactly. It was an off-road vehicle that could unfurl an advanced parachute and then travel by air over impassable terrain. It only weighed 1,100 pounds and had a five-bladed propeller for flying. So instead of trying to hack through thick jungle or boat for days, they just flew right over it? That's ingenious! It is. It meant they could bring supplies, medical aid, or just visit people in places that were incredibly difficult to reach before. Think about how much faster and easier it would be to respond to emergencies or deliver important things to isolated communities. It shows how these innovative vehicles aren't just for avoiding traffic, but for truly connecting people and helping those in need by overcoming huge geographical challenges. It also was marketed for pipeline inspection and other activities in desolate or difficult areas. Flying to help others. That warms my dragon heart. Almost as much as a good fire-roasted marshmallow. This maverick flying dune buggy really took the idea of mobility to a new level, using the sky to solve real-world problems. What a truly inspiring journey. Ready for some quick fun facts, Booger? Always. Lay them on me. <laughs> fun fact number one. While many flying cars are still concepts, the world's first consumer flying car showroom opened in Los Altos, California on April 15, 2021. Though, so far, no certified flying cars are in production for you to buy yet. Fun fact number two. The Aero Car, designed by Molt Taylor, was so famous that it was even featured in Chuck Berry's 1956 song, You Can't Catch Me. Talk about rock and roll and flying cars. Fun fact number three. Did you know the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, listed over 869,000 registered drones as of 2021? Almost half a million were for recreational use. 
and nearly 400,000 for commercial use. That's a lot of flying machines in our skies already. Wow, <laughs> that last one, which means drones, isn't quite a flying car, but it shows just how much stuff is already up there. <laughs> yes, sir. So, how do we make sure all these flying machines don't crash into each other? <laughs> That's a big part of the science and safety. For widespread use, flying cars will need to become largely autonomous, in which means they use their own computer brain. And the highly reliable computers will mostly do the flying. They'll need automated routing and collision avoidance systems so they don't crash. Also, they need to be certified independently as both a road vehicle and an aircraft by different authorities. That's double the testing. Double the testing for double the fun. <laughs> if you say so. Plus, safety is super important. Remember, if a regular car breaks down, you pull over. If a flying car breaks down, well, you don't want it falling out of the sky. So, reliability and safety are key. Power is also a challenge, as current batteries can only support flights for about 20 to 30 minutes. Well, I can fly for hours, but I run on a different kind of fuel. It's true that flying cars have been a big part of our imaginations. They've soared through movies and TV shows for a long time. Like the Jetsons. I don't know if you ever saw the cartoon The Jetsons, but their flying car was super cool. I always thought it looked a bit like a big bubble. You got it. And remember the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future? It could fly too. Or the car in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that flew by magic. So many cars and movies were used by the police and could take off vertically, hover, and cruise using jet propulsion. They looked like flying police cars. That's a great example, Booger. They're called aerodynes because they direct air downwards to create lift. It's clear that flying cars are a very popular theme in fantasy and science fiction. So... Are these futuristic vehicles really going to become a normal thing? Will we all have flying cars in our garages soon? That's the big question. While some companies want to release cars very soon, it will probably be another 10 to 20 years before flying Uber-style services are common. The challenges include the high cost. Get this, some prototypes are around $300,000, as well as creating new rules for the sky and making sure they're super safe and energy efficient. Sounds like there's still a lot of planning for the humans to do. Definitely. But the dream is very much alive. The concept of flying cars has evolved to embrace electric vertical takeoff and landing, or EVTOL vehicles, as the frontrunners, offering a cleaner, quieter, and more efficient way to travel. When they finally do become widespread, they could truly change the way we travel, making traffic jams a thing of the past and opening up a whole new dimension of travel. I can't wait for the day when I can just drive to the sky and fly instead of battling rush hour traffic with my giant wings. Me neither, Booger. Dragon wings can get in the way. Don't get me started. <laughs> And that wraps up another amazing episode of Atomic Booger. Thanks for joining us on this high-flying adventure. See you later and be greater. Atomic Booger is a production of Light Circle Entertainment, copyright 2025. Produced by Mark Rako. There's much more at AtomicBooger.com. Atomic Booger is intended for entertainment purposes only and may not be the opinion of Light Circle Entertainment or its associates.